Does it worth playing Uncharted 1 Drake's Fortune with an emulator? If yes, then how? Well, you'll find out soon. If you have a low-end system, or as some would call, potato, don't even think about it. But if you have a medium to high-end system, first you have to know the problems you might encounter during your playthrough. I'll mention these problems and the workaround to reduce or fix them. The first and most obvious issue is the inconsistent and below 30 frame rate which is highly dependent on your system after all it's a high demanding game for emulation so first thing you're gonna need to do to fix this problem is to make sure you are using the wiki pages recommended settings which only includes enabling right color buffers you can also upscale resolution based on your monitor and you can also enable fsr but the most important thing is to be sure to check disable depth of field and disable more motion blur in the game's patch menu. As I told you, the game's default frame limit is 30, but you can bump it up to 60 by changing V-blank frequency in advanced tab from 60 to 120 Hz. It technically doubles the frames, but after doing this, I had a little problem. All the cutscenes were playing two times faster, and the workaround for the problem was to change the frame limit in GPU tab to 60. So basically, I'm telling you to do this option only if your system can pull it up. This is all you can do to experience the best performance based on your system. If you have a more powerful system, there are less problems. Now let's talk about the second problem, crashing. I got a lot of crashing, nearly 25 times during start to the end game. The only workaround to the problem is what one of the Discord members of RPCS3 told me. On the latest builds of RPCS3, you can also try the new RSX FIFO accuracy option. The option is located right above driver wake up delay, and from some testing, it also works in increasing stability for Uncharted games. Setting this to atomic seems to reduce crashes. There is also a third tiny problem and that's the controller shaking mechanic in the game. If you don't have a dual shock or dual sense, you can't benefit from this mechanic. There are some parts of the game that is better for you to use this mechanic in order not to die. You don't have to do it, but not doing it makes the game a little more challenging, especially the end game. Apart from all these problems, I actually enjoyed the game. So does it worth it after all? It depends if you have a low-end system, no. If you have a medium system, well, it depends on you. If you can handle 20 crashes, yeah, you absolutely should play this game. And if you have a high-end system... What are you waiting for, huh? What are you waiting for? That was it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this.